I don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, that's what happened. Oh, I'm not gonna check my bag again. Because stuff like this. <laughs> okay. Did you take into that dog? Not yet. I it's a little ways to check in her and just not sure. Your advisor? I don't think I know him. Otherwise, it's wrong. You want to hear anything? Yeah. 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 Were you a counselor? Okay. Yeah, the counselor from this. Okay. Can you do, did you do it when you were a high school? I did not actually. Did you do it? Uh, I did a similar thing at Stanford. Oh, oh CMAC? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, no, no, no. I've debated whether or not to call out CMAC, but I, I, I haven't done it yet. Pretty fun. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think knowing like very little. <laughs> Try to plug in Snap. So it was very, it was a big learning experience. It was very like early experience. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't need to transfer. Yeah. You learn things. So I learned, like you're here now. Although I, I didn't really like it. It was a good experience. And this class was very good for self psychology, which was coming into that. So I really had like freaking actually like, okay, now I have enough math to <laughs> I was being counselor, I promise. Okay. A lot of fun. Well, welcome to the last uh, lecture today. Uh, after this, from five to six, we scheduled a problem solving session, just an opportunity to hang around in the math department, talk math, and, uh, and uh, talk to the speakers. Uh, but uh, for now, we have Lavin Dimitrov, who will talk about getting families of all functions and other Right. Thanks, Andre. Right. So that, that's the general title for my series of four lectures, but today it will be a kind of an introductory talk to chaotic analysis, uh, and um, it will be a little bit technical, and hopefully um, we will we'll see more motivation uh, in, in the, the following talks. Um, in, in a way, uh, I will have better to give this talk at all, if periodic analysis was taught at, uh, you know, like introductions and sophomores, actually it's much easier than real analysis, but for some reason it's never taught at university. So, so uh, uh, somehow, yeah, the main point today is to explain that actually it's quite easy. And there is something uh, which, which is important, um, uh, which is, uh, um, this idea, so, so okay, we are, most of the lecturers consider themselves number theorists, and, um, but what, what um, uh, number theorists often do is they, they, they take idea from various fields as long as they solve number theoretic problems. And today uh, we'll, we'll see how uh, ideas from Banach spaces and functional analysis uh, I mean, we'll, 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 we'll explain some tools and, and in the forthcoming lectures, this will be used to, uh, to do some chaotic things. So if I may just say one word uh, about the general idea of these talks, I mean, uh, you might wonder like, why do we care about chaotic health functions and things like this at all? Uh, and truth is that uh, the, the 
the most exciting problems probably uh, that number three is trying to solve. There's nothing theoretic in them. I mean, it's about the L functions, you know, all about the person to the entire conjecture, which relates uh, some arithmetic invariant and some purely analytic uh, L function. There's nothing theoretic in this. But uh, somehow to, 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 to connect this two very different worlds, uh, the algebraic analytic one, one has to build the bridge. And it's a very difficult thing to do. And um, once um, one allows himself um, chaotic versions of, of these results, I mean, things become much more amenable because, well, uh, I hope you'll see um, uh, as um, I, I like the, um, uh, the, the, um, the description, uh, the vision uh, Kato gives in uh, one of his uh, uh, books is uh, that somehow uh, the, the numbers, uh, you can uh, look at them with different lights. So uh, somehow the, the Archimedean uh, point of view, like embedding the, the numbers in R, this is like looking through, through the sunlight using and, but you can also uh, see the numbers periodically, so embed them in in uh, in, in periodic uh, rings and fields, and this would be like uh, um, lighting them up with with uh, like a starlight, and there are as many uh, you know uh, primes as as many stars, and, and okay, so and and above all this, his problem. It, Self uh, fruitful over uh, the the last uh, decades. I mean, using chaotic methods to to prove um, very classical results. So uh, let me now uh, get to the, uh, the the introduction uh, to uh, chaotic distributions that I want to. Uh, And again, it, it will be a rather elementary talk in the sense that, uh, well, uh, it is relatively basic and uh, I will not prove um, most of the claims I will make and we can discuss those later. So, um, okay. So the basic object is the, the periodic integers, which uh, is just the inverse limit of P over uh, C over P to the N Z. And in the light of John's talk, uh, because it's a profinite um, a group, uh, I mean, it's it's well suited to study Galois groups uh, because they're also profinite. So that's like kind of first index why one, one prefer periodic numbers to complex numbers, even to start with if one's interested in Galois groups. And, the, the field of uh, the fraction field is just tensor Q. And this is embedded in uh, QP bar, an algebraic closure. And what's happening is that, I mean, as you know, all oh, it's not good for analysis where something is uh, not complete. So, so that, that's a big difference with the reals are complete, but this is not complete. And but it's norm, so so there is this chaotic norm, um, uh, which um, okay, uh, which goes from Q P bar to uh, to R plus, and which sends P to P inverse, that mutual normalization. So I mean, you can complete it for sure, and so so that's let's say uh, exercise and <coughs> sorry, there's no problem. Completed that CP. And there you get lucky because not only that's complete, but this is also algebraically closed. Because otherwise, maybe you can play this game forever, completing and taking algebraic closures, but it stops. And so that, that's good for, for periodic analysis. And, and it's involved with this uh, periodic norm here. Okay. Okay. So, so the first. Uh, concept which is useful is the one of a Banach space. 
Uh, so if we take A to be a uh, commutative um, QP algebra, and all my algebras will have a unit. So, so like that, that was a little bit particular in, uh, this morning. Uh, and if it's norm, so so if you you I will not decorate the norms uh, too much notation. So I'll denote by absolute value kind of all the norms I'm encountering. So so okay. So you assume that's a norm. And in the chaotic world, a norm will always mean the following three things. So first of all, it, it's, it's, uh, it separates the points, so that's normal. Then what is specific to the chaotic world, because it is already the case over QP, we want it to be ultrametric. So we want um, the norm of the sum to be um, uh, less than this. So basically, this means that all triangles in the periodic world are always isosceles, right? There is no actual triangles here, and also means that uh, any point in a in a in a, in a disk uh, is the center of this disk, and and then uh, because it's algebra, you 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 own this, and actually that's if you want like a easy exercise that if you uh, to a scalar times a vector, that's actually equal to um, uh, the scalar times a vector, the basic properties. And if in addition, so, so the definition is that you say that A is Banach, it's a Banach uh, the algebra. Uh, if, uh, if A, even though it is norm, is complete. So I think maybe the, the, the first I, time as a student, I saw the pianics. Well, I really thought it would be, it would be really difficult because what's ZP? So ZP is like a disk and, um, and inside you have like P minus one smaller and inside each one. So it's, well, it's totally disconnected as it was mentioned earlier. So it, it, one might think that it's very difficult to do analysis on something like this, okay? So, so somehow, uh, uh, I mean, there is no natural way if you want to do an analysis. So the, one of the points of the lecture today is like to, to decide the way to do analysis so that in all following lectures, this will not be recalled. It will be somehow the, what's understood uh, behind. Okay, so, um, so there is a notion of complete and uh, uh, the second part of the definition is that um, okay, so so more generally, um, uh, more generally, um, uh, a Banach uh, sorry, more generally, uh, uh, a Banach module. Um, well, will be the same thing. Um, uh, you just don't put the x times y, so, so you have this basically. Okay, so what do we consider? Banach copy modules. Okay, so um, so there is a notion of a orthonormal basis. Uh, so um, if you take uh, a family of elements in in um, uh, it's, uh, you know, M, this module, if you consider a bunch of, M, of elements, uh, so this is uh, orthonormal family, normal basis, <coughs> if, so it's a little bit different from what you've seen in linear algebra. Uh, so you want the norm of each element to be one, and you want that for each M in M, um, you can uh, write it in a unique way as a sum from I in I with uh, A I P I. So this is in QP here. Um, uh, with um, like the A I is going to zero. 
uh, well, going to zero, this means that, um, I mean, it's with respect to like uh, a filter on I where we filter by finite subsets. So, <clears throat> okay. And, and as a consequence, so, so if this is a, a orthonormal basis, then one can check that M actually that the norm of M is the soup of the norms of, um, of the AIs. Okay, so that's the notion of the Panax phase. So now um, uh, we'll, we'll actually con we'll consider some, some Banach spaces, which will be of uh, interest because I mean, uh, where I'm going is that I want to define some objects um, where the periodic L function will live, okay? Because uh, um, uh, a complex L function is just an uh, analytic function on, on C and, and You'll see, so, so a periodic function will also be a regional analytic function in some sense, but to start with, it will be a distribution. So, so let, let's explain what's a distribution. Um, so we consider X to be um, open compact subset in QP to the D. And actually I just decided while doing the last draft of my lectures that D will be one, but I'm just saying whatever I say, uh, doesn't matter that you can do it in many variables if, if, if it becomes needed at some point during the lectures. Um, yeah. But for today, there is no point to complicate matters. Um, arguments are exactly the same. And you fix a finite extension. So, why you fix a finite extension? Uh, because uh, any finite extension of QP is complete. So, this will be good for, um, for the analysis if you take QP bar. Uh, it won't be good. And uh, sometimes we take CD, but you know, for now. And then uh, you consider A of X. So this will be like the first important player is the set of functions on X, which are L valued. And such that F is locally analytic. Uh, so such that uh, for each point in X, um, well, um, so f of x um, can be written as sum of alpha i of x zero, x minus x zero to the power i. Um, for uh, x minus x zero less than some epsilon, which also depends on. This. I mean, so 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 this is the the. This is the, 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 the set of locally analytic functions. So our, our, around each point locally, it's, it's given by a power series, okay? And because uh, X is compact, so this is because X is compact, Actually, every uh, local analytic function is local analytic for a given radius, okay? Because you cover it with small balls and you extract the finite subcover. So, so this is a union for n at least one, just two, um, of a n of x. A n, a n of x are, are uh, functions which are locally analytic of radius. Uh, e to the minus n. And of course, uh, the, their uh, obvious inclusions. Uh, okay, this will be the object of the next um, uh, composition. Where is this big eraser so I can <laughs> save some time during the. Just put it here. So, um, well, so, so that, that's the first thing the local identity functions. Um, Okay, maybe at this point it's not even clear why we care about local functions. So let's advance a little bit and we'll see. Um, right. So so uh, so there is a lemma, which is that um, so if you take f in uh, a n, so that's a local function, uh, you can define uh, 
uh, the norm of f, the end norm, as the soup of f of x, the periodic soup. And uh, the, the exercise is that this supernorm is the same as um, the soup of um, of the, this um, Taylor coefficients, the normal Taylor coefficients. So this is not a very hard exercise because, uh, as John explained, in chaotic analysis, the sequence converges if the general term goes to zero. And so it's pretty easy. I mean, you have just to compute the valuation of this. The valuation of that is basically depends on the radius. So it's p to the minus n times i. And then, so, so this is exactly uh, when, when those things go to zero. Uh, I mean, this soup exists because actually precisely these things go to zero. Okay. Okay. And so the lemma is like for the, this part. And the second part is that actually uh, a n of x endowed with this norm. Uh, <coughs> It's a Vanak uh, L algebra. I define what's a Q, Vanak QP algebra, but you just replace QP by L, um, and there's the definition. Uh, and um, and then we take a definition. So the definition is that um, uh, we define Vn of x as the continuous dual. A n of x. So this is also a Banach algebra. A dual of a Banach is a Banach. Okay. And, um, and uh, you define um, uh, uh, D of x as the projective limit of this D n of x. And so this is the, the space, uh, this is the space of distributions. Okay, so this is the space of so these are these are linear functionals or locally analytic functions, okay? So um, So is dx not formal? Is dx not continuous dual of ax? No, no. That's the thing. Basically, yeah. There are many things which are false. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's not. Uh, I mean, one of the things is that there is no there is no norm on ax. Okay. So so ax uh, is in, it's in with the family. I mean, sorry. I mean. <laughs> There is, no, uh, there is not a single norm here. So this thing here is endowed with a family of norms. So this is endowed uh, with a uh, family of norms. And the way it works is that basically if you take like a new, um, uh, if you take like new distribution here, um, <clears throat> Like the, the end, and if you take any integer n, uh, the end norm of mu is just the end norm of mu restricted to a n of x, which now makes sense. So, this is basically this is the image of mu into um, the n of x. Um, Okay, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm a little bit tempted to us or, my, uh, or that other lecturers are, are to constantly give some motiv motivation with the expense of maybe not finishing the material, but maybe I, I should say something. I mean, uh, why, why we care? So why, why we care about, uh, uh, about like locally analytic functions on ZP? Well, so so the, the or power series at all, or even like analytic functions. It is because okay, so this is somehow the spoiler. I mean, you'll see tomorrow that uh, modular forms 
correspond to um, sections of some line bundles on some symmetric spaces. And somehow uh, the, the, the line bundle will correspond to a representation which we saw today, which is like the CMK. I mean, the CMK, this is the, uh, oh, these are just the polynomials. Uh, how do do this? Uh, like the QP bracket X of degree at most uh, something, okay? So these are polynomial of degree at most N. And um, uh, one way to, to um, okay, so, so it's a bad idea to just consider the polynomials of any degree because this has countable dimension and uh, uh, it, it's bad for analysis. So, so a, a good way to, to, to think about these things is this polynomial functions. Uh, you embed them in local analytic functions. And, um, and somehow in the language of distributions, you will want to construct a linear functional here, which when restricted to polynomials gives some numbers that you like, okay? So, 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 so today is kind of abstract, but the idea is that we, if you assume that um, automorphic forms, et cetera, give you some algebraic theory, so some, some theory on um, uh, finite dimensional um, QP vector spaces. Uh, somehow you want to put all this together uh, so that the limiting process makes sense. I mean, uh, in, in Raghuram's uh, words, like for example, if you have a modular form of weight K, we want someday to make a sense what it is to take a limit of modular forms as the weight varies. So, so this limit should take place somewhere. And if you want each individual modular form has values in, in a space of a different dimension and, and somehow the only way to really make sense of this is to consider some finite space which involves all these finite dimensional spaces, okay? Good, so um, let me not get too much distracted. Uh, I already did. So, so there is a uh, um, there is a basic and very important theorem of Amis, which says that um, well, so this space a n of x uh, has uh, orthonormal basis uh, given given by uh, so you take the uh, integer part of i over p to the n, take factorial, and then take the binomial coefficient. So these are polynomials, as you as you see. And i is in n. So this is so it has this orthonormal basis. Okay. Um, and so this has. Um, several corollaries. So the first corollary um, is somehow gives you some flavor of what's a, a local analytic function. Um, well, so the first corollary is that, um, okay, so, so notation, so like for F, uh, put F bracket zero to the F and put F uh, bracket I plus one uh, of X. So, so take these discrete derivatives of f if you want. Yeah. Well, so the first corollary of this is that f is a local analytic function on CP. If and only if, if you take the mean length of uh, over i of this. Um, uh, discrete derivatives at zero, let's keep it positive. Okay, uh, and um, there, there is a second corollary which is more important. So this part, part is more for fun or if you want to see what's a local analytic function differently. The second one is really important. So, so the second one is that uh, because the polynomials basically 
I mean, if, if this space has a normal basis by polynomials, this by definition means that the polynomials are dense. So, so this implies that uh, if you take the n analytic functions into the n plus one analytic functions, so so I understand like uh, this this picture I I I did over there, um, like a, a one analytic function so will be something which is given by a kind of four power series one in each disk, and a two analytic function will be something that is given by sixteen different power series on smaller disks. So this for p equals five if you want this picture. So of course there are much more uh, analytic functions when when you require smaller radius. Okay, so this is like much bigger, uh, and, and 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 here like the the, the statement is this this has dense image. Yeah. Uh, what's the question? Uh, I was wondering. So based on how we define it so far, once we have a power series inside each little disk. Yep. So they have to relate to each other in any way, or do we just get to choose one? Get, get to? Um, do they have to relate? Yeah, so, 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 so what I said um, uh, is that take any disk, so small or big doesn't matter, okay? But take a disk on which it's analytic. So first of all, what's happening here and what's happening here has nothing to do with each other, okay? okay? But uh, once you're analytic in, in, in this disk, each point is a center of the disk. So actually you're analytic with any base point. I mean, if, if you're analytic because like you, you did an expansion of, around this point, it, because every triangle is isosceles, I mean, you can do the exercise that it will be analytic with some other coefficients starting from any other point of the disk. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you have to trust me on many things or maybe do them yourself. I mean, I, I'm not really doing these elementary things that you can do if you just have time to do. Okay. Um, Partly because they cannot really be done very shortly. I mean, it always takes like half a page to do such an exercise, but, but there's nothing really other than linear algebra and some norms, inequalities. Yeah. Okay, so this has dense image, and 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 and, and therefore, uh, hence, uh, if you take like from a distribution and you restrict it to uh, here or here, I mean, so those maps are uh, injected as well. So basically, to determine a distribution mu, it's enough to uh, to restrict it to a locally analytic function of some radius. Okay. So this uniquely determines the the distribution, and it's even injective if you further restrict it to to polynomials as the one I wrote there. Okay. So. Um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, given the, the time, I'll, I'll skip the proof. Um, okay, so proof, uh, yeah, let's skip the proof of this theorem. Um, right. um, um, right, and I, I go to the uh, to the the, the, the theorem that we will really use, which is the theorem of uh I and Amin's debut. Um, okay, maybe, okay, because, uh, sorry, um, I just mentioned, uh, sorry, can I, I can, we can fit it here, so let's just go in. Um, okay. So, so there is a theorem of mother, which is not very important for what we do, but I just write it in the corner here in case you want to reflect a little bit on periodic analysis. So, so, I mean, we kind of jump started with these local analytic functions. Uh, somebody might might have wondered what if we just took like continuous functions on ZP, right? And that's probably a, a already a, a good question. And what's happening is that if you take a continuous function on ZP. And you do this uh, this game, so you do somehow the derivatives of this function at zero. Okay, so so to f you you consider this sequence of m discrete derivatives at zero. Okay, so I mean the theorem of Mahler is that you find the element in L zero, ZPL. So these are like the the, the sequence that go to zero. Okay, I mean uh, f actually f of x you can show it's like the sum of uh, uh, f m zero 
binomial coefficient x over m. So, and as we said, um, uh, something converges if it goes to zero. So, so the theorem of Mahler says that um, continuous function, this is like just the L0 sequences. And probably you know from real analysis that L0 is not really a very good space to do analysis on. I mean, you, you should know that like L2 is a much better space, for example. So, so that's maybe like a token why, yeah, I mean, it's not very good to just consider um, a continuous function. So we want to do like something a little bit better or we want to work in something a little bit smaller than, than just continuous functions, okay? So here is the theorem of the least value, like what would be good. Um, so, so we fix um, uh, uh, we fix an H, which is a non-negative uh, number. And um, <clears throat> ah, uh, sorry, I should start with the uh, definition. Sorry for that. Um, uh, okay, so so. Uh, this is like a definition inside the theorem. Um, <clears throat> so the definition is that mu in uh, d of x, so a distribution, is h admissible if there exists a, a positive, strictly positive constant, such that for all n, the end norm, so remember, this is what's called the Frechet space. It's a limit of Banach spaces, and it's involved with a family of norms. So we want the norms. You don't want anything on any particular norm, but you, know, you want the norms uh, not to uh, uh, grow too fast. So this equivalently means that um, like for each f locally analytic, of radius n, if you do like mu of f, uh, sorry, why did I start with double? Oh, I, I was with double first. Uh, so mu of f, now there's no double. It's less than equal to uh, c p to the minus nh uh, n. Um, <clears throat> So somehow you, you test, I mean, a distribution is a, is a linear functional on all local analytic functions. And uh, somehow you, you allow more and more denominators, but in a controlled way somehow, you, yeah. Okay. Um, right. So, so what this theorem says, so, so maybe this definition is, uh, yeah, it, it's really important when, when you see the theorem. For now, it's maybe just a definition, uh, but when it becomes uh, important, this um, is now. Um, so, so there are two parts of the theorem. Like the first says that a uh, H admissible distribution, an H admissible mu of the of X is uniquely determined By uh, its values on 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 locally uh, on well on polynomials which are just on one small ball. So if you consider um, <coughs> the the ball a plus p to the n z b, so that that's the characteristic function on one of the one of the here there is like a and this is radius p to the minus n so so you just consider uh, one small ball and on this ball you put the the, the polynomial c minus a over uh, maybe I should put x for like x minus a over p to the n to the j and for j of is zero in the integral part of h. Uh, conversely, uh, any uh, linear form on, on this function, uh, or any linear form, any 
and there's no idea for any function and any any um, function any functional uh, and any um, any any values on on these uh, functions uh, subject to additive relations. I mean, it has to be a measure. So, like the value on on on, on any ball should be the sum of the values of. Like the smaller balls, right? The obvious thing. Uh, on these functions, uh, such that uh, like the value on the, the, the absolute value of the, the absolute the periodic uh, norm of the value on this function, x minus a. J evaluation uh, uh, extends to a to a uh, unique link extends uniquely. To a distribution in uh, the end of um, X uh, which is which 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 on top of this is H of this okay so uh let me comment on this. So, um, so, so this theorem is really the key of how periodic function will be constructed. Um, and the idea is that we'll be given a bunch of values. So, so I mean, uh, you know, like an L function, um, basically will be, will be, um, Okay, we'll see in, in, in the lecture tomorrow, there will be like, for example, some character. Uh, they can be some automorphic representation, which will be fixed. So I can even like uh, ignore this and there will be some value for us. And what's happening is this is just a number. Uh, this thing will be just a number and this thing will properly normalized will be like some, a priori will be some complex number. But if properly normalized, uh, we will consider it as a periodic number because it will be in Q bar, so we can see it in Q bar. Okay, so 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 we, we are given a bunch of numbers, and you want to put these numbers together. So K, so what we'll is is like a character on 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 ZB, for example. So you want to put all these numbers together. If you want. Maybe if I write one that's easy, it makes more sense. Okay, so, so you, you have a, a, a countable connection of numbers. I mean, J varies in some finite set, but the characters are infinitely many of those. So you want to fit them together. And you're saying, okay, uh, I want those to be uh, the values of a distribution on, on one plus PCP, if you want, I mean, one plus PCP multiplicatively. So one of the things John explained is that this with the multiplicative set, if you use the log, the periodic log, this is isomorphic to ZP with the plus, okay? So, so I mean, uh, whatever I'm doing today for ZP, it will be applied for one plus PCP via the log, okay? So you're saying, those guys, I want them to be like uh, to integrate chi times um, the, the map uh, like x to the j. And well, it is just linear algebra to see that the characters of on, on zp is the same thing as the, the step functions on, 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 the, on the disks, right? 
right? This is like um, for a finite group, for a finite abelian group, the elements or the characters of the group is the same thing. So if I give you uh, like the, the values on, on each disk, or I give you the values when you integrate characters which are constant on the disks, this is the same thing, right? And, and so, um, and so basically this theorem answers when the, the data of all these numbers, so this is basically these numbers, fit together. And, and, the, and, the, and the, the reply, the, the, the criteria is very simple. You just evaluate on these numbers and you take periodic valuations. And if it goes to uh, infinity like crazy, uh, if, if, if it goes to infinity uh, like faster than exponential in, in, in uh, P to the N, then there, there won't be anything. But if you can control the growth, for example, if those things stay bounded, this means that this will work for H equals zero, or if they grow like for a certain rate H, then uh, basically, uh, you will be able not only to to evaluate your measure on polynomials, but you can you will be able to evaluate it on any kind of uh, uh, analytic functions. Okay. And why we want analytic functions? Well, that also came a little bit in John's talk when he interpolated the the powers of the cyclotomic character, um, and, and we'll see more of it. But um, but, but but somehow. Uh, this theorem is the, the envelope where we put like a, some infinite discrete data and you want it to fit in something that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's not probably completely obvious to uh, why, uh, how people first thought of Banach spaces and uh, this, um, all these theories to, um, but now that they're now that those concepts are are, are found, it's clear that, that it's the, the right um, uh, setup to, um, to to do periodic approximation. Okay. Um, okay. So so maybe. Um, um, Okay, um, let me maybe uh, propose an exercise. So, um, so as I said, so let me just write what I just said. So, so, um, so finding a linear functional on things like this, Which respects the additivity, of course. Uh, oh. Your A is in CP and, and, and is the huh? same as on, sorry, uh, what I'm reading in is like giving the values. Of a linear function of, on such kind of step functions is the same as giving its values of on on character sky, uh, which are so functions um, also locally constant functions, which you start with uh, ZP and then you go to ZP mod, which again ZP, then you take any. Uh, Finish the character. So this is just linear algebra. Taking all the characters or taking all the values is the same. I mean, you just do it on any finite level, right? I mean, what I'm basically saying is that uh, um, I'm just, just saying that um, uh, it's choosing the values like chi of a or a mod. Uh, P to the N. Oh, sorry, we're choosing the values such as, uh, yeah, uh, mu of A. Mu of A, like this, 
it is the same as uh, choosing the values like chi of a mu of a. Uh, here I uh, sum for a in um, c, c. And now I, I vary chi. Chi is a character. Still okay, so so that, that's uh, well, that, that's just all it. And and but here it's a little bit where um, uh, you can see the flavor of uh, this admissible distributions is that if mu is um, zero admissible. So what means is your admissible <laughs> means that the values on all uh, you forget this because j is between zero and zero. So zero admissible means just that. Um, okay, let me recall it here is that mu of uh, the characteristic function of one plus p to the n and cp. This thing theoretically is bounded, so it's like always okay. So if mu is zero admissible, and if uh, mu of chi is zero for all chi of conductor, uh, let's say bigger than 100, then mu is zero. So the first part of the exercise basically shows that you cannot deduce anything on chi unless you know all its values. So to deduce to something is zero, you need to know all the values because it's just linear algebra. You cannot like uh, find uh, 10 variables from, oh, sorry, like uh, from 10 equations. If you have like 11 variables, you cannot solve, right? But uh, in the second part, because of this submissibility, it's very subtle. So you have like, uh, the first hundred equations are missing, so a priori you cannot find any value. But because of the growth, actually, you, you can solve and show that the whole thing is zero. It also works like if does, these values are given, then I mean, you can find new kind. It's, it's a unique mistake. Okay, um, so I think that that's probably something we can reflect on to, to, to really. Um, and maybe the third thing is like generalize this uh, to any h, to any h admissible. What would be the correct statement and proof of this fact? So it's a little bit kind of an open question. So, yeah, if you see this, probably you understand what the disability means. Okay, so um, let me now get to uh, what's called. Uh, a mistransform. Which will answer, uh, well, maybe a basic question, which is why the Pianical functions are functions, because so far we just explained what's a distribution. So, uh, it, well, so, so here is the answer. So you take, uh, so let you be any, uh, uh, Distribution on ZP admissible or not? Just a linear functional on um, uh, on, on the on the local identity functions, and define a like a miss a u of t. So this is called a miss transform. Uh, it's just the integral over ZP of one plus t to the power s t mu of s. So that, that really has like the flavor of this atomic character powers. Um, I mean, this really makes sense because John explained that uh, uh, you can lift periodic uh, numbers to periodic exponents, kind of. Uh, well, <laughs> and you can raise a one unit to a periodic exponent. The one is right. The one is crucial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I put like a two or something, then it's bad. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and and the proposition is that 
the assignment which to mu uh, gives a mu of uh, a mu of t if the bijection induces a bijection between uh, uh, the distributions on Zp one to one correspondence with um, formal series formal power series um, which converge on um, the open disk the open disk of CP well uh okay so this is nothing you have to trust me uh open disks are bad things um uh what's happening is that um well that's probably a very bad analogy but a little bit like open disks is like open varieties and it might be open before like projecting for proper things so something like really converging on a disk is better uh, so um so in this line probably okay so okay then let, let, let think it, okay forget maybe what i just said this was maybe just some kind of philosophical thing let's see more concrete what's a power series which converge on this if you think about it so a power series which converges to this will be like some a n uh, t to the n something like this and you want this to converge as soon as the norm of t is a little bit less than p, z should the t be a z uh, because the z in your set? Let me here. Uh, which way I want to send? Uh, sorry, yeah. So actually, c should be less than okay. Can I change here if you don't have anything? You know what? Let's change the other way because s is like, uh, okay, I kept s for the complex, but. Since I want to make an analogy here, let's put S. Okay? And I agree that yeah, it should be S. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, if you think for a second, what would be uh, such a series, uh, the general term to go to zero as soon as, like, the evaluation of S is less than one. I mean, it's uh, it's really complicated. I mean, because of course, if the a and n are bounded, this will go to zero, but they, they can also grow, but like as a log or something, as long as they grow slowly as that goes to zero, but, but it's very complicated analytically if you think about it, because it's not like some neat condition like bounded or, you know, it's like they grow, but not too much fast, you know? So, so I mean, in a sense, you feel that it's a little bit kind of difficult to work with something like this. In, in contrast, if you have uh, something, uh, if you have uh, this thing, I don't know how to say something like this. So, so this means like uh, H admissible. So if you have a mu, which is like H admissible, then uh, this corresponds to a formal power series sum of A and S to the N, uh, such that uh, the A N, is uh, the PI evaluation is a big O of N to the H. Well, I don't know, but to me that seems much more concrete. So, so for example, the zero admissible ones are exactly the one for, for which the A N are bounded. So, so um, um, yeah, so this is like a sub thing of uh, this. And, and, and here it's also something if you think about it if the a n have a polynomial growth then when you hit them by some geometric prog progression this will still go to zero so um, okay um right um maybe uh if i have like three more minutes i, I write uh, one more transform uh which is just uh, it's mainly because uh, it fits well in this uh, sequence of ideas, but so, so the, the other transform, which is the so called Melitian form, it will be revisited uh, several times in the analytic setting and in, also in the PI setting. So, so it's okay if uh, it's more like uh, writing something quickly that will be revisited. 
Um, okay, so 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 the, the the so I recall from from John's lecture, I recall that V star at least in P dot, uh, it's uh, isomorphic to C dot P Z star cross one plus it's P. Okay. And so for um, um, for any L, so L is the extension of QB, finite or infinite is okay also like CP. You consider uh, the continuous homomorphisms from, from ZP star to, to CP star uh, to L. Okay. So uh, this is a good exercise that um, these guys are locally identified. So in general, something continuous is not locally analytic, but if it's continuous and if it's a homomorphism, necessarily it's locally analytic. Okay, so the book, that's a, a nice exercise. And well, and so the, the uh, well, the, the definition of a Mellin transform is you take mu some measure. Uh, this time I take it on ZP star, but this is really not different because this is isomorphic to ZP. So that's more for convenience. It's, it's, you can think of it as taking uh, P minus one distributions as before, right? This, this is really kind of the union. It's isomorphic to the union of ZPs for I equal from zero to P minus one, okay? Uh, one. Okay. So it's really as before, like this, you can think of it as a union of new eyes, it looks like this. And the Medin transform is uh, N chi of uh, N, so N, U and for each chi here, so chi is a character here. Chi is a character here. Uh, you consider the, the integration of this character, chi of C, uh, P mu, uh, C. or I can put S again. Okay. And, and the theorem that we uh, saw, like the least value, this sheet says that um, there is a the, the association, the map which to mu attaches its main transform is a uh, one to one, it's a bijection between the distributions of the star and. Uh, the analytic functions on on this um, um, like uh, L values here L values. So. Um, yeah, so via Merlin or at least transform, we can actually see um, distributions as analytic functions. So this will be key. Uh, for example, uh, um, if you want to differentiate a periodic function, it better be an analytic function to make sense what it is. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, the person to the dark conjecture, I mean, many of the conjectures we're interested in involve derivatives of L functions. So, so it's important to have this bridge to actual functions. Okay, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, I think there are like some questions that cannot wait. Uh, The way the afternoons are supposed to go is like whoever is not too tired, 
can join us in the common room and hopefully there are more snacks and, and after the snack time uh, or even hearing i mean somehow from now it's it's not really like a five to six discussion it's kind of from now until people go away like <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. so uh we'll get some of you upstairs talking. Yeah. yeah, you were asking me about this thing that's at the top of the board again.